I'm Dan Self. Um, I'm a science lab technician at Interior and I like to do demonstrations and uh, help out in the labs for the students. Um, I've prepared some demonstrations today. Um, what I'm doing is the theme of these demonstrations is uh, time. So I'd like to demonstrate things that react to different rates and as scientists we can control time. Bunsen burner on in the lab. Um, and Bunsen burners are burning methane gas. And um, this methane gas is combusting and reacting with oxygen in the air. That's what's producing that flow. Now I can control that in a certain way. Scientists do like to control the actions. And what I've got in here is uh, some washing up liquid and some water. As simple as that. And this is methane gas coming in from the gas. And the pipe is going under uh, and through this tube here. Um, this is what we use to demonstrate the concept of flammable to the students. You can see this methane trapped in soap bubbles coming out. If I detach this piece, it never quite works the same twice. Methane is actually lighter than air. Eventually, there you go, that's flammable. Now, as well as flammable and accelerating reactions with oxygen, uh, we can use physics um, to control time. And what I have here are two, uh, two pieces of neodymium iron ball. And they look like magnets. In fact, you can fool people into thinking they're magnets because they stick to each other, but really only one of them is a magnet. So they're both the same substance, one's been magnetised, one's been demagnetised. Now I happen to know for the purpose of demonstration that this one is the magnet. So this is an ordinary copper tube. Neither of them will stick to it because copper isn't magnetised. Um, so if I, if I decide to put the, the non-magnet through, you'll just see it fall through this clear window here and it'll fall onto the bench at normal speed and onto the floor. But if you've got this one through, if you look closely, it's going extremely slowly. And I found when I drop this through, people just instantly look straight down and there it goes on the floor. Um, and the reason of the delay is because uh, uh, in physics it generates currents around the tube that create a magnetic field that's opposite to the magnetic field. If the magnet going down, it repels it all the way down. That's called Lenz's law. Um, in fact, um, that's the physics side. Um, we can also introduce this delay into chemistry. Traditionally, people used to do this with uh, a fuse uh, made out of gunpowder. So if I bring this gunpowder here, so I've got some prepared gunpowder in this pest and mortar that I've ground up and I've dried out in, a, in an oven at a low temperature overnight. Um, this has been ground very, very fine and it does become very um, explosive. Uh, the ingredients of gunpowder made a long, long while ago for um, the first time. This is carbon, so you can get that as activated charcoal, or just charcoal and grind it up. You really have to grind that, that up. That's the fuel. Um, and then you have to add slightly more quantity of sulphur, so then you grind up the sulphur, this, this yellow powder here. Um, and then you have to add more than these two put together in terms of weight although it doesn't look much more, uh, a substance called saltpeter, which is potassium nitrate, sometimes called nitre. Um, and this accelerates the reaction. So if I demonstrate um, the ignition of gunpowder, as you can see I've done some before on this piece of deep of mat. So we'll pull this into a little line and it will act as a fuse. Um, for instance, people would um, 
put a big long line of this um, and then put an explosive at the other end and they would, they would light this, this side and it would spark all the way down like you see in movies. So for this one, I'm going to light it using a Bunsen burner and I'm going to put on uh, my safety specs. Because uh, bits can fly into the air. The only danger with this is you can have sulfur dioxide produced. It does take a little while to ignite. You see that pink colour is due to the potassium in the saltpetre. These fumes are just pieces of particles of charcoal and uh, sulfur coming off. Um, and it has a really nice smell. You have to actually be here to do it, to, to fully experience it. But that, that pink colour potassium, the nitrogen in there is accelerating the reaction of carbon and sulfur, and they're just burning in oxygen in the air. We can actually control time in another way, delay a reaction using a chemical reactant. I have um, here two mixtures I've made. This reaction is called the iodine clock reaction. And I have in here hydrogen peroxide, which is the substance used to bleach your hair, with a little bit of acid, just to make it harmful. Um, so if I pour this into the beaker, and then I pour in this one, it's got iodide, potassium iodide, it's a salt dissolved in water. And I've also added some starch to this. Uh, if you were just to react with this and this, um, they would instantly react as a fast reaction and it would go black, colour of the iodine starch complex. I'm just going to mix these around, it's always good to mix things in chemistry. Um, but what extra I've put in here is a delaying agent, so that's called thiosulfate, and it will react with all the hydrogen peroxide first and it will put off, it will put ahead in time the reaction hydrogen peroxide with the iodide that's in there. So when we mix these, you'll be able to see, um, see what happens. Give it a swirl. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There you go. Instantly went black, didn't it? So you can see the reaction was fast and it was delayed, as opposed to just a slow reaction. And there's something else here I've lined up. This is a very unstable um, substance. Maybe they do not touch unstable substance. Uh, but it is stable in a way. It's unstable in that it really wants to be a solid. And you can see it's a liquid. And it's flat. I've got quite a lot up here. The only way you can make it um, solid is if you give it a little tiny piece of solid. So if I use the slightest tiny piece of, of the substance when it's solid, this substance by the way is called sodium acetate, this solution here is super saturated. If I put that in, just put it close to that line, and then watch carefully what happens. Now, it's all gone completely solid instantly. So now it's even possible for me to turn it upside down. Right, I'm going to combust some phosphorus and some sulfur uh, in air and then put them into uh, pure oxygen. So that so we have special apparatus for this. This is the phosphorus. It's a red, red powder. There is another form of phosphorus called white phosphorus, which is rather more dangerous. Just put maybe less than a gram of red phosphorus into this, which is called a 
vitamins B. Yeah. 